Alive Cornerstone families, I am so glad you're with us for our final piece of the armor. I know you know what it is. If you've been following along and checking off the pieces, you know what we're going to talk about today. But before we begin that part of our lesson, let's start our service and worship. Are you ready? I need you to stand up, get your wiggles out, stretch if you need to, and let's worship today, okay? strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth, buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hey everyone, today we're talking about our last piece of the armor of God. So far, we've talked about pieces that help us defend. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, having our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and last, we're talking about our weapon, our offensive weapon, the sword of the spirit. And so the weapons we fight with are not physical weapons with our hands or our fists. So the Bible talks about the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 6, 17 says, Take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So this Word of God, 
we know that that is the Bible. So we're going to talk about how the Bible helps us fight off the enemy and the devil from his attacks. So I've got all my armor here. I've got my shield. I've got my sword. Let's see if I'm ready to fight the enemy now. Oh, hey, uh, I, I, I'm going to have to ask if you just please, please, please not attack me today. You see, I did read a psalm, you know, a short while back, but I don't really understand what it means, and I don't really know how to use this thing yet. So if you could just come back, like, maybe, you know, uh, two weeks from now, uh, I'll read the rest of the psalm, and we'll, I'll figure out how to use it, okay? Okay, sound good? Cool, cool. Oh, uh, hey, so listen, we've been doing this for a while, and I'm tired, okay? I, I, I read a few passages of scripture, but I don't really remember it, okay? It was a while ago. I didn't really memorize it, so I need to, to figure it out a little more. I had some lessons, but I don't remember how to use this thing, so we're just going to need to do this another time. Okay, so... Obviously, as we saw there, the enemy is not going to wait until you know how to use your sword of the spirit, the word of God, before he tries to attack. So we have to be ready. We have to be constantly practicing and learning the scripture. That's why after each uh, lesson, we always give you all uh, scripture verses to go and to learn and memorize so that you guys can be ready. And so that we can all be ready and understand the word um, so that we can properly use it against Satan. So we need to know the Word of God and always be ready for when he attacks. From Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 through 11. Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. The Holy Spirit came down on him like a dove and filled him. He was led by that Spirit to the wilderness. There he was tempted by the devil for forty days. Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, then tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus said to him, No, the scriptures surely say, People, people do not live on bread alone. So Jesus passed that first test. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem to the highest point of the temple. And he said, If you were the Son of God, then jump off. For surely the scriptures say, He will order your angels to protect and to guard you. And they will hold you up with their hands so you don't even hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus responded, The scriptures also say, you must not test the Lord your God. So Jesus passed that second taste. The devil took him up to a high mountain and revealed to Jesus all the kingdoms of the world in a moment time. I will give you all of this because they are mine to give to anyone I please. All that you must do is bow down and worship me. But Jesus said, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So Jesus passed the third test. The devil finished tempting Jesus. He left him till the next opportune time. Then angels came and took care of Jesus. So we find out from this Bible story that Jesus did have hard times and that he did face challenging times, that things did not come easy for him just because he was the Son of God. Actually, because he was the Son of God, Satan attacked him more. And from this Bible story, we can see where he used the Word of God to defend himself. Forty days must have been a long time to go without food. Just think about it. Think how hungry you would be. Jesus had to have been starving. And then the devil shows up and he says, hey, Jesus, just turn this stone into bread, right? 
Mm. He could have done it. After all, just a few chapters later, we read where he turns five loaves and two fishes into bread. He feeds 5,000. Then again, he does it for 4,000. Twice he's done it since then. He could have done this. But no, Jesus knew that had he done that, he would have been disobeying what God had told him. God had said, go into the wilderness, fast and pray. He would have been directly disobeying what God wanted for him. So when we choose to do what uh, only makes us happy, we may be directly disobeying God. So let's look at what that may look like when we're only doing what makes us happy. Hey, I'll be right back. I gotta go to the bathroom real quick. Okay, sure. Oh, he's gone. I could look at his cards. Or I could look at mine. He would never know that I did. Then I could win this. And that would, that would be great. I would be so happy. I shouldn't. I know God says that it's wrong to lie and cheat, but I really want to win. When we're tempted to do things that only make us happy, we're being attacked by the devil. We're being attacked by the enemy. So we need to know the word of God. We need to know and have our sword of the spirit so we can defeat him. And I bet it looks something like this. Hey, I'll be right back. I'm go to the bathroom real quick. Okay, sure. But I don't want to lie or cheat. In Proverbs 12, 22, it says, The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. I want God to be able to trust me. Hey, what a miss. And so Satan tried to tempt Jesus by bringing him to the temple and telling him to throw himself off and that God's angels would keep him safe because he used the word of God. And he was really tricky about it because he didn't use it correctly. But thankfully, Jesus knows the word of God and knew that Satan was trying to trick him. And so he was able to defend by using the word of God correctly. So even though Jesus could have thrown off and God could have kept him safe, he didn't really need to do that. There was no need to show off. It wasn't what God wanted him to do. Do you ever feel like, well, that you want to show off and show people how great you are? Maybe it might look something like this. Hey, hey. Ooh, I like that song. Yeah, me too. Hey, let's get down. Man, oh, I look good doing this. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah, watch this. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Yo, that looks so cool. I'm going to try to do it too. Oh. Okay. Ooh, okay. That's, whoa. Okay. Stop. Stop. You're hurting us. Hurting our eyes. You don't know what you're doing at all. You can't. You can't do this. So God has blessed us with different talents and gifts. They're given to you to share with other people. You might be really good at dancing. You might be really good with math. You're really smart with that. All of that is to bless other people and to encourage them. It's not about you and of drawing to attention to you. So. Let's look at what this might have looked like. Hey, Bethany, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, that was not kind of me to, to say that. Hey, how about this? You know, I'll show you how to do the move. That way we can both do it. Okay, that sounds good. All right, here we go. Okay, so the final temptation that the enemy put on Jesus was to try and make him uh, think that it was all about him. He wanted him to focus on himself. And when we're trying to put all the attention on ourselves, we want to be the most popular, we want to have all the stuff, then we are letting the enemy attack us. And so that might look a little bit like this. I have an hour before bedtime. I kind of want to play with my Legos, but I don't know. There's, I feel like there's something else I could be doing. <gasps> I forgot to read my Bible today. But I really want to play with my Legos. It's so much easier to think about myself than to think about others. When, when I am so focused on what I think is best for me, on myself, then I am really letting the enemy convince me that I don't need God. But when we focus on what God um, wants for us and what he's asked us to do, then we have his peace and his joy and his presence guiding us. And I think it would look like this. I could. Maybe watch TV, read a book. I really want to play with my Legos. I feel like 
I should, I know I shouldn't. I should, I should read my Bible. So we've learned today about how the enemy tries to tempt you to do things that you know are wrong. And he's going to bring doubt and confusion into your mind. That's why it's so important for you to know the sword of the spirit, the word of God for yourself. So just like that incredible example that Jesus gave us of using the scripture, we can use the word of God. Let me give you a few tips on how to help you to read your Bible. Okay, so one important thing to do is to be consistent. You want to read your Bible often. Now, I'm not telling you you have to read your Bible for an hour every day, but it is a great thing if you can read your Bible every day, sometime. Just read the word and stay consistent. Another important thing is to be focused. Find a quiet place where you're not gonna be distracted by the TV or by other people. And also, you don't want to just be like, oh, here's my Bible, um, let's see, oh, let's read Isaiah 10 today. It's a good idea to make a goal for yourself to maybe read through an entire book of the Bible or to, if you have a devotion that can help you to stay focused. If you're not sure, a good place would be to start in the gospel. Start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and read one chapter each day. And then after you read that chapter, go back and look and find a verse in that chapter that you really liked and think and pray about that verse. So that will help you to be focused on the Bible. And the last thing I want to tell you is that it, it is so okay to ask for help, okay? The Bible is extremely, um, there's a lot of stuff to it and people study the Bible their whole life and don't understand everything in the Bible. So if you're not sure what a word means or you're not sure what God is talking about, find somebody in your house that you can ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. So now I wanna pray with you. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Father, we thank you so much for the amazing word of God that you gave to us. Thank you for all of the beautiful words and stories that you gave us so that we can know about you. Father, I pray that you'll help each one of us to love the word of God. Help us to want to read the word of God. Even when it seems confusing, Father, help us to want to ask for help and to keep learning more about you. Help the, those words to go down deep into our hearts and help us to memorize it so that when the enemy attacks, we'll be ready. Amen. So think about when you're going to read your Bible this week so you can set a goal and you can be consistent. So let's look up a Bible verse together. So go get your Bible so we can look it up. Um, it's always good to have an idea of where certain books are or to memorize all the books of the Bible. Hey, Mr. Isaiah, I can say the books of the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, like without even, I know it by heart, I know it from memory, I can say okay. it really fast. In fact, I think I can say it in under a minute. You want to see? Wow, that'd be pretty impressive. Okay, okay. from memory. Let's, let's see. Here we go. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalms, Psalms, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, First and Second Jude, Third John, Jude, Revelation. Yes. Wow. Or you could do that. Um, that was pretty good. <laughs> um, so we're going to look up a Bible verse. Uh, we're going to look up Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. All right, so when we're looking at the book of Hebrews, it's in the New Testament. So one way I kind of think about it is it's after all the, uh, the letters from Paul. So the last book is uh, Philemon. So it's right after Philemon and right uh, before the book of James. So it's uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. 12. Okay. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So, did you guys get it? <laughs> of course you didn't. I read the wrong verse on purpose just to trick you guys and see if you were paying attention and actually looked it up. That was actually from 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 16. Now let's read the real verse, okay? I'm sure you guys, you guys have found it. All right. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. 
and it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. So that's an awesome scripture that shows us just how powerful the Word of God is. Well, now you guys got a scripture verse that you can use to fight the enemy. So I encourage you guys to learn this scripture verse and to uh, think about it and to do what it says so you know um, you can be ready to use this verse when you need it. So knowing the word of God helps us fight the attacks of the enemy. Well, did you enjoy our service today? I hope that you had as much fun as we did preparing it for you. So I want you to make sure you're staying with us on Facebook and YouTube. We have so many fun things we're trying out there and it's just a great way to connect with us when we're not able to be together. But um, make sure you are putting on your full armor of God every day, every day. All right, you guys have a blessed week and we'll see you next week for our wrap up of the armor of God.